This is my brother-in-law's safe. When he bought it, he wrote the combination down on a piece of paper and in a moment of genius, put the piece of paper inside the safe and locked it. Then he immediately forgot what the combination was and it's been locked ever since. He called me up and asked me if I could build him a robot to open the safe. So that's what I've been working on. I'm not even sure what's inside the safe, but based on all of the bad luck I've had leading up to this point, I'm convinced that it's probably stolen pirate treasure or something. Everything that could have gone wrong has gone wrong in this project, but I've got it working really reliably now and I'm ready to try to crack the safe. So let me explain what I had to do to get to this point. The motor I used in part one and two works great, but I noticed during some of my longer testing sessions that it would get off track. Now stepper motors are good because they're really precise, but it's an open loop system, which means there's no sensor on there detecting whether or not you've reached your target position. To close that loop, I need to add a positional sensor on the output shaft of the motor. So I ordered this one from DigiKey. It has a motor encoder built right into it. This motor encoder sends little pulses to the microcontroller as it spins around. This will give me the feedback that I need to tell whether or not I've reached my target position. The first thing I need to do is to remove the old motor and put the new motor with the encoder on. The microcontroller I used in the previous version has this cool TFT display on it, but I'm gonna swap it out for this newer version because it puts the TFT display on the other side of the board. With this simple change, I designed this new enclosure and the display sits flush up against that inside wall. Not only that, this new version has three buttons that I can use to navigate through the menus. I designed some button caps right into the enclosure. These button caps are flexible so I can push down on them to actuate the buttons. This new enclosure has a little lid that slides into the slots and it has magnets built into it so I can just attach it right to the robot. I really liked how the previous stepper motor drivers were attached right onto the back of the stepper motor, but I can't do that with these new motors because the encoder is in the way. To get around this, I designed a little riser block that gives room for the encoder but still allows me to attach the motor driver. I've got to be honest with you, I made a very embarrassing mistake that cost me like several weeks of frustrations. I've been working on the code on the microcontroller that will read the pulses coming from the encoder. I've worked with encoders lots of times before, and so I was very confident in how I was going to approach this problem. Well, it turns out that the way I have always done it actually introduces a little bit of an error as it's counting the pulses coming from the encoder. It's not a problem if the motor is running in one direction. It counts the position of the motor without any issues. The problem happens when I keep changing directions, which is obviously gonna happen while I'm cracking the safe, and it introduces a little bit of an error that accumulates over time and the position gets off. I was convinced that the hardware I was using was just broken until I looked very closely at how I was counting the rising and falling edges and I discovered that error. So once I fixed that, everything started working flawlessly and I was really relieved and also kind of embarrassed that it took me that long to discover that problem. With that problem finally resolved, I need to work on the next one. I've got a handle that I need to turn every time I wanna check a combination. I thought about several different ways to do this. I can use a servo motor, or I could use another stepper motor, or I could even use like a pneumatic piston, which would be really awesome, but it would require like a compressor to be in the equation, and I just didn't wanna mess with that. So I found a really strong servo motor from DigiKey, and I'm going to create another little framework, just like I did for the stepper motor, and I'll design a little bracket to grab onto that handle and turn it every time I want to check the combination. And I can show you what that frame looks like in the neighborhood of make-believe. Like I said, this looks a lot like the frame that I built for the stepper motor. It's two parallel plates that are separated by some spacers. The servo motor is fastened to the middle and I have a slot cut out of that bottom plate so that I can slide this thing over that handle. So I need to go ahead and make this servo handle actuator frame thingy and then once I'm done with that, I can head over to Levi's house and start integrating this onto the safe.
I've gotten to the point in this project where it's become necessary to come and test things on the actual safe that I'm trying to crack. The way this is gonna work is that this top piece with the stepper motor is gonna spin the dial to a certain combination. Then I'm going to use the handle actuator that I built with the servo to test that combination. If the combination is not correct, the handle won't turn far enough to activate this limit switch. So I'll keep doing that over and over and over until the handle turns far enough to activate that limit switch, which will tell me that I've got the right combination. I've got all of the code written that spins the dial, but I need to write some code that will turn that servo motor to try the handle. I've had an overwhelming amount of interest in this project. I think it's because of how relatable it is to screw something up like my brother-in-law forgetting the combination to his own safe and then try to rectify the problem with some good old fashioned engineering. Instead of cracking the safe all by myself, I thought it would be more fun to live stream the whole event. I had a bit of trouble with the start of the live stream, but eventually I got it up and running and people were able to watch my very first attempt at cracking this safe. The biggest issue that became very apparent on the live stream was that the handle actuator wasn't working very reliably. It wasn't able to return back to the retracted position fully and so it would get bound up and it would cause the stepper motor to skip steps. The commenters of the live stream actually came up with a name for this problem and they called it the handle scandal. Fortunately, the solution was pretty simple. I just installed a spring to help the servo motor return back to the retracted position. I also learned how hot a servo motor can get while working really hard, so I made a mental note to bring a small cooling fan the next time I did this. Do you remember at the beginning of this video when I said I thought that this project was cursed? Well, let me tell you exactly what happened next. About a week after the live stream finished, I went back to Levi's house to work on the safe cracking robot. Unfortunately, I forgot my 12 volt power supply that I normally use, so I started looking around his house for something to replace it. I found a power supply and according to the label, it should have worked. So I went ahead and I plugged in the power supply and I immediately heard a popping noise followed by the smell of smoke. It was clear that I had blown up the microcontroller with the TFT display because it would no longer turn on. I didn't know it at the time, but that small stupid mistake cost me several weeks of time. Getting a replacement microcontroller was actually a lot harder than I expected. It's a new product, so it's kind of in and out of stock. I also didn't realize this at the time, but I burned out the motor controller that's attached to the stepper motor, which was fine because I usually buy two of everything for that very reason. Well, because I'm an idiot, I also burned out that second motor controller, so I was left with no more replacement parts. I dug through my stash of things, and fortunately I found a stepper motor driver that will work. Okay, video editing Zach here. If you want more proof that this project is cursed, my video editing software just did something that has never happened in the six years that I've been doing YouTube. It deleted some footage on my SD card from my camera before I could even copy it to my computer. I was freaking out for like a good half hour before I found a program online that can recover deleted files. Unfortunately, I had to pay the $100 license fee for the software, but I got all of the files back and they work. I don't think that's a coincidence. I think there is stolen pirate treasure in the safe and they don't want me to open it. Do you remember in my last video when I said I didn't want to be making trips back and forth to my brother-in-law's house to develop this? Unfortunately, that is exactly what ended up happening. I kept finding new bugs and new things to troubleshoot and I would have to come home and think about it and make solutions and bring them back with me. Well, after several weeks of doing this, I decided I was done with it and so I asked Levi if it was okay for me to bring the safe back to my house because at this point I had been working on the project for several months and it was taking too much of my time. So we loaded it up into my car and I brought it back to my house. Let me tell you, it's so convenient having this thing right here in my office, next to my desk, and next to all of my tools and supplies. So I've got all new components in there and everything is working fine now. So I'm ready for my second attempt at cracking this safe. I've got a little cooling fan that is cooling down the servo motor so it doesn't overheat. So I'm just gonna hit start and see what happens. Okay, it's working so far. The red number is the first number in the combination. The orange is the second, and the blue is the third number. 
If you're wondering why the third number isn't testing every number, it's because this safe dial has false gates. I don't need to bother testing any number that isn't a false gate. Go back and watch part two if you want a better explanation of this. People always ask me how fast this robot can crack a safe, and the bottleneck is actually the handle servo motor. It has to move to position and then move back before I can move to the next combination. So the servo motor has no problem. It can whiz around and go as fast as I need it to, but it has to wait for the servo handle to finish moving before it can proceed. I've done a quick calculation and I figured that this thing is gonna take about 15 hours to run through all 80,000 combinations. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it run all night long. Hopefully nothing happens in the middle of the night and I wake up to an open safe. That would be awesome. Unfortunately, I woke up to some disappointing news. I came in here to find the robot had completed all 80,000 combinations, but it failed to open the handle enough to trigger the limit switch to let me know that I had found the combination. So I was extremely frustrated and disappointed with this result. I feel really bad because I wanted to show you guys a cracked safe, but I'm still plagued with some of these handle scandal problems. I need to be able to tension the spring that returns the handle back to the starting position and I just can't get the right balance on that tension. I know this is going to be disappointing for so many of you, but believe me, as disappointed as you feel, I feel way more disappointed because I have spent months on this project and I really, really, really want to see it be successful. I'm not giving up on this project, but it's going to take me a little bit more time, so I really appreciate your patience. I made a list of four things that I think potentially could have gone wrong, which prevented me from being successful, and I posted that to my Discord community and we're discussing it now to see what the next step should be. If you can appreciate all of the hard work that I've put into this project and all the other projects you see on this channel, become a Bite Size supporting member by visiting patreon.com forward slash Bite Size or clicking the join button below. These projects take a ton of time and money, so if you want to see more of them, please consider becoming a channel member.